One of my biggest pet peeves is when I'm trying to communicate with someone and they're just sitting on their iPhone not paying attention to life around them. This all started in sixth grade when everyone began to get iPhones and I was the only one with a regular slide phone, which soon became worse after I lost that one and inherited my mom's old flip phone. Thanks, mom. <laughs> one of my most awkward moments was when I was sitting with all of my friends and every single one of them was either checking social media or playing games while I was sitting there awkwardly observing. All of my friends had a cooler device that I didn't have, which made me feel left out. While they were completely absor absorbed in their phones, nobody was paying attention to me. However, I was focusing all of my attention on them, which made me feel pathetic and alone and un unwanted. Already I could see that my friends and I were drifting apart. When was the last time we had a real conversation? And then it wasn't so much the fact that we weren't having a face-to-face -face conversation as much as a lack of a possession that got me to thinking. Having frivolous things has a negative effect on socialization and can increase selfishness, ruin friendships, and decrease one's ability to, to recover from a setback. This led me to my research about materialism and its negative impact on society. Now I would like to focus a little more on just what materialism is. By definition, it's a tendency to, co to consider material possessions and physical comfort as more important than spiritual values. To break it down, people who are materialistic see value in things rather than in people and life. I'm sure, I'm sure many of us know someone who's extremely materialistic and deals, deals with them every single day. But what led to this? Consumerism. Consumerism is one of the main causes of materialism. By definition, it's the promotion of interest in customers, which really means that advertisers will make their advertisements more intriguing so more customers will like it and then buy it. I'm sure many of you adults out there think you were so much better as kids, but how many of you were dying to get the newest Sean Cassidy album or the coolest rollerblades? Even 20 years ago, people were just as materialistic because of all the advertisements. However, if we were to look back 40 years ago, there was less materialism compared to today because of less advertisements. 40 years ago, there was less technology, thereby decreasing the amount of opportunities for advertisement placement. In modern day, advertisements are placed everywhere, Websites, billboards, apps, TV, magazines, newspapers, cars, planes, boats, even eggs in grocery stores have been stamped with advertisements. And an average, of, an average person sees up to 5,000 advertisements per day. This all came from the start of consumerism. Consumerism began in the early 1800s, leading materialism on a steady rise since 1849. In 1849, the famous California gold rush where people from all over the world traveled outrageous distances to get there in an effort to gain money and power. With this newfound wealth, people wanted to spend and buy goods. These items increased their social standings and brought on the age of the United States materialism. While researching this topic, I began to question whether material goods actually make people happier. So I created a survey. The graph behind me shows the results from the 68 people who took their survey I, re I developed related to materialism. The goal behind this survey was to see if materialistic people were actually happier than non-materialistic people, or if they were even sadder. The first part of my survey contained 15 questions that allowed me to categorize the people as materialistic or experiential. They then rated themselves on how satisfied they are with their, with their lives. Here's what I found. People who are materialistic are not actually happy. The results could not be more clear. It is interesting for me to see how many people are happy and not materialistic, yet how many sad materialistic people there are. This supports my point that people who value possessions are not actually happy, even if they think that that's what they're getting from their material products. From my readings and life experiences, I have found that three major issues arise. There is an increase in selfishness, one's friendships suffer, and one's ability to recover from a setback is impaired. Now let's take a closer look at each of these. As I said before, the 1849 gold rush was the beginning of materialism as we know today. This is also a prime example of how materialism can lead to selfishness. Travelers from the East Coast and other parts of the world did not realize that in their lust for wealth and power, they were destroying Indian homes, crops, spiritual territories, and basically the Native American way of life. Gold rushers were oblivious to the fact that they were destroying a culture and thought only about themselves and their money. In this situation, karma really came into play because as many of us know, not many of the miners ended up getting as rich as they hoped. After leaving everything behind, destroying land, and working hard, long hours, they barely made enough money to make it back home. 
After this event, the Indian ter territory kept shrinking due to the selfish, ignorant, materialistic people who were more focused on earning their share of gold, land, and power than they were on how their actions affected others, proving that lust for gold leads to selfishness. Another effect that materialism has is it can result in meaningless friendships and expendable friends. When materialistic, tangible possessions come first, meaning that friendships will soon start moving down on the value scale while material possessions become more of a priority. This is because it can sometimes be difficult to appeal to someone who's materialistic if you're not the latest model iPhone, laptop, or other type of gadget. When one is materialistic, our less materialistic friends will begin to lose, inter lose interest in the desire to value our relationships with our iPhones than our relationships with them. Is it possible for two people to be called friends when their top priorities are objects rather than people? How long can this go on? People who really value friendships, people who really value friendships share their feelings and experiences with each other, bringing them closer together instead of just ditching them the second they aren't right there with you. Personally, personally, friendship means, for me, friendship means being in the moment, which means sharing your experience with the, experiences with each other. Now, onto the next idea, handling stress and setbacks. Eric Reinfleisch, a current professor of business administration at the College of Illinois, once said, if you're a materialistic individual and life suddenly takes a wrong turn, you're going to have a tougher time recovering from that setback than someone who's less materialistic. In simpler words, if you are less materialistic and something awful happens to you, you, you are more used to handling these situations and tend to have a less drastic setback. P materialistic people do not take setbacks well. They turn to negative behaviors such as frustration, depression, and giving up easily. Which begs the question, why do they react differently? Because they do not deal with life. Instead of being focused on what is happening in life around them, they're focused on their things and only getting more of them. For instance, a couple of my friends, whose names are not needed, are so obsessive over getting, are so obsessive over getting straight A's because they earn money from their parents for each one. When one of these students receives less than expected, they are flabbergasted. Not earning the money from their parents limits the ability to buy the latest Vera Bradley wallet or Xbox video game. Maybe, just maybe, not focusing on earning the money from their parents might lead to enjoying the learning and social aspects of school. Uh, so for someone who is materialistic, they aren't used to handling these situations and tend to have a more drastic setback. For someone who is less materialistic, they are more used to problem solving regularly and will have a better ha handle on resilience. Overall, in order to recover from a setback in a less drastic way, try spending more time experiencing life with your family and friends. This will help you know how to handle more situations and look for more of the positives. I'm sure many of us know someone who is materialistic or we might be that person. If we keep living life centered around expendable products, some real issues will come into play. Our friends will see us become selfish and self-centered, and those friendships will fade away. But being materialistic is curable. There are ways to start moving away from one's stuff-obsessed past. Realize that you aren't the things you own. You are a person and should be around people, not obsessing over getting the latest products. And life is short. Use your limited time wisely. Once a week, just put down the technology, put down the distractions, and spend more time outside experiencing life with your family and friends. Make more experiences that you'll remember when you get old. Admit it, you won't be telling your grandkids stories, you won't be telling your grandkids about your Instagram feed from March 2nd, 2014 on the specific comment of Janie's birthday post. And most important of all, always remember what you really value. When you're reflecting on your life, you'll remember the memories you have shared and the experiences you have had. So the best and easiest way to prevent being materialistic is to always remember what you really value. Family, friends, and community. Materialism is a waste of time. Time that could be spent experiencing life instead of online shopping. Personally, after researching this topic for months, I now know that I will cut back on the amount of online shopping, Instagram feed checking, and Snapchat story updating. But what I will do is spend more time outside experiencing life with my family and friends. And I hope you will also. Thank you.